Ayo! Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 are both excellent games. Their fast-paced, fluid, highly replayable gameplay, and their complex, well-realized stories which enrich the Sonic world and flush out its characters, make the games a joy to revisit to this day. But just as with every other game in existence, they're not without their share of flaws. And unfortunately, both of them, especially as I won, are victims of shoddy porting, breaking and changing anything from graphical effects or textures, to even introducing glitches in some cases. Which is a real shame, because many people's introduction to the adventure games were through these ports. So that's why I'm here to recommend essential mods for Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, mods that will turn both games into the definitive versions of themselves, to both let everybody experience the games the way they were intended, and also to flush them out to get the most fun out of them that we possibly can. Before we start, make sure you have the SA1 and 2 mod loaders, which make downloading and installing each mod simple and easy. Links for them and every mod featured in this video will be in the description. Starting with Sonic Adventure 1 are several mods that are all included with the mod loader. The Dreamcast Conversion, Lantern Engine, Dreamcast Character Pack, and Sound Overhaul all come together to restore SA1 to its Dreamcast roots. The Dreamcast Conversion changes several parts of the graphics to match the original Dreamcast version, which featured much more colorful and interesting visuals for pretty much every location. Not to mention fixing elements which the DX version botched. It's pretty amazing how much life these classic textures breathe into the game after having played the DX version for so many years, which is comparatively much much more dull. But to go with the DC conversion is also the Lantern Engine. The DX port massively downgraded the lighting, seeming to rely on ambient lighting, making several areas look super flat, washed out, or even weirdly introducing a sort of cell shaded look to the characters at times. This mod restores the Dreamcast's more varied, realistic, and vivid lighting so that the game's environments, especially in dark areas, have more depth to their visuals. To complete the Dreamcast aesthetic is the Dreamcast Characters mod, which changes all affected characters back to use their DC models and designs, for those who like the more rounded look or want a more nostalgic experience. Personally, I actually prefer the DX models, as they're much higher poly and more faithful to Yuji Uekawa's artwork. Unfortunately, the DX models suffered from inferior texture work, but fortunately, that's where the Mimic DC Textures mod comes in, a mod that changes the DX models' textures to that of the Dreamcast models, culminating in undoubtedly my favorite look for these characters. Last couple of mods included with the loader is the HD GUI, which makes high-definition versions for nearly all of the UI and HUD elements, and the sound overhaul, which replaces sound effects with higher quality versions from the DC version, as well as restoring missing sounds and fixing sound bugs. Moving on, we have the Onion Blur DX, which restores the blur effect on characters when moving quickly, such as with Sonic's feet or Tails' with tails. After that is Fixes, Adds, and Beta Restores, featuring countless tweaks and additions like general fixes, adding back unused voice clips, and best of all, restoring cut beta content throughout the entire game. So if you want to push SA1 even further and even add back in some neat assets that never made it into the final game, this one's for you. Sonic. <laughs> To further flesh out the characters and world, SA1 had the characters comment on their location or situation when standing around long enough, featuring unique lines for pretty much every level, area, or even boss fights. Well, the Idle Chatter mod makes all that dialogue instantly accessible via a single button press. So at any given time, you can hear a character's thoughts while playing through the story, which I think is really awesome. A mod like this would be amazing for SA2 as well, just saying. The Lightspeed Dash in SA1 required you to charge up first before you could whisk through a path of rings, so it tended to bring your flow through a level to a halt. The Lightspeed Dash on Action Button mod makes it so it's more easily accessible simply through hitting the Action Button in mid-jump. Meaning not only are designated dash rings faster to whisk across, but now you have another movement option to speed up your flow through a level to use on any trail of rings, just like in SA2. And given how big the range of the Lightspeed Dash is, you can now find tons more practical creative uses for the move. The next few mods are all options that come with the mod loader itself. Itself. First is the Charge Ancient Light Only option, which makes it so charging the Spin Dash only activates the Lightspeed Attack instead of the Dash. So if you have the aforementioned Lightspeed Action Button mod, this ensures your charge will attack enemies instead of homing in on rings. And to that end, you can also use the Reduce Lightspeed Dash Charge Time option to assure that your flow won't be too hindered when you do decide to charge up. Lastly for SA1, be sure to tick the Can Always Skip Credits option, so that you won't be forced to sit through the credits every time you complete a story if you don't want to. And again, it would be mighty nice if SA2 had an option like this as well. 
Speaking of which, now we move on to Sonic Adventure 2. First up is, of course, the cutscene revamp. The GameCube port of SA2 changed and broke several visual elements of each cutscene, such as textures, lighting, and effects. It could get so bad that your understanding of the story would even be hindered by the breaks. Naturally, this mod aims to restore all those missing elements, so now the cinematics are greatly improved and much better realize the story. It's great to see how far the presentation can go to improve the overall experience. Next up is the HD GUI for SA2, which like SA1, makes all UI and HUD elements high definition, as well as the menu overhaul which cleans up the menus and restores elements from the original game, such as the Omar Chow tutorial section. For during the gameplay, there's the No Model Tinting mod, fixing a lighting bug on in-game models that made them appear darker than they should be, as well as the Rendering Fixes mod which restores some textures on Rouge and Tails and Eggman's mechs. The ports of SA2 royally screwed up the mixing of the sound effects, making them much louder than they should be. The Fixed Sound Effects Volume mod fixes that by lowering them all by 50%. Now you can rest easy knowing your ears will no longer bleed from rail grinding. I'm sure we're all familiar with how annoying it can be that the lightspeed dash is mapped to the same button as the somersault and bounce attack. Well, the action remap mod instead maps the move to the Y button respectively. So now you won't plummet to your doom or lose all momentum from a somersault instead of dashing through rings like you want to. But speaking of the somersault, as we all know, it has a set low speed which can kill your momentum. The fast somersault mod makes it so the move preserves your momentum, so you can activate it at any time and continue running at the same speed, which goes a long way in smoothing out the flow and levels where it's used frequently. What's more, the mod comes with two options. One where the somersault rolling animation plays out normally, and another where the start of the move will have the character slide along the ground when moving fast, which I prefer since I think it looks really cool. The mech stages in SA2 were high-octane levels that played with risk versus reward, and how many enemies you could kill within the limited time the targeting laser was active. Meaning constant movement to avoid enemy targets to preserve your scores was key. And while the stages were very fast-paced, the character's mechs had pretty sluggish maneuvering. That's where the ever-versatile Physics Swap mod comes in. If you change Mech Tails and Mech Eggman's physics values to that of Gamma from SA1, your movement is much more unchained. You still have to contend with the unwieldy turning controls, but a faster top speed and acceleration, and much higher jump height does wonders to smooth out the flow of these stages. The faster movement allows much more freedom in speeding through an area, and the higher jump allows much more creative potential in reaching other areas using the hover in its preservation of upward momentum, not to mention allowing for a higher skill ceiling when it comes to dodging enemy attacks. Minus some jank moments, as the stages weren't designed around these movement values, I'd say this is the best way to play the mech stages. Of course, the physics swap mod could be used for any other character as well, where you can swap in the values of all characters from SA1, SA2, or even heroes. Not just limited to SA2 either, as the physics swap is also available for SA1. So try playing around with it, you might find a set of values for a character you really like. For the Chow Garden, having the Chow Data menu mod is super useful, letting you view any given attribute or stat of your Chow upon picking them up and going to the pause menu. The PC version of SA2 broke the shiny two-tone Chow, making them appear to glow really brightly. Some players actually liked this bug and affectionately named them Bright Chow. But for those who actually want to see their shiny two-tone Chow normally, the Bright Fix mod fixes just that. SA2's mod loader also features a whole bunch of neat options you can enable, the most amazing of which is allowing all emeralds to be trackable at the same time in the hunting stages. While it certainly didn't ruin the stages, the nerfed radar I'd say was definitely a downgrade from SA1, since it lengthened the levels in a pretty artificial way. With being able to track all emeralds at the same time, the flow of the stages feels much more organic, and goes a hell of a long way to make Mad Space in particular a much, much better level. Last option you can't go without is the reduced spin dash delay, which greatly reduces the time needed holding the action button before charging the spin dash, meaning less downtime and faster chaining of maneuvers to cross areas. Next are a couple essential mods that apply to both games. First of which is the Chow Stat Multiplier, an option available for both games' mod loaders. Vanilla Chow stat increases were extremely slow, making the system honestly unbearably grindy. And while thankfully an exploit made Chow raising much more reasonable, this option drastically increases the amount of stat gain per item you give them, making the whole process much more rewarding. It's not perfect, as sometimes the XP bar will go down for some reason instead of going up, but it's still astronomically faster and honestly something you shouldn't play the Chow Garden without. Last up for the essentials, naturally, are the SA1 and SA2 retranslated mods. The English dubs of both games left much to be desired, whether it be shoddy voice work, and then the world could be yours. Script changes. I was on a snooze cruise, I guess. Or outright bad translations. The first Bernoulli spherical space colony, called Ark. 
But even if you enable the original voices, the game still shows subtitles for the English dialogue. Retranslated takes those subtitles and edits them to be accurate translations of the original dialogue. With this, the game's stories and characters are significantly better realized. And so, those are all the essential mods that I hope will enrich everyone's experience with these games to the highest degree. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 are very important and influential to me, so it's my pleasure to help everyone else get the most out of them, like I have. Please consider tossing a couple bucks my way on Patreon to support me to make more gaming content and my fan-made Pokemon anime, Manifest Art. Peace out for now.